Hey everybody, I'm Jordan Garza and welcome back to Unredacted. So I took about a month off from the channel and I was trying to figure out a new direction to take it as far as the content that I'm producing. You know, I thought the political stories would be more interesting, but based on the analytics, they're not. So I hear you. We'll try something different. So we're going to start branching off into some more conspiracy videos. I've got a good idea for the video. Uh, video. It's about the Club of Rome. It's kind of a precursor to the Illuminati and some believe even more pervasive than the Illuminati. So we'll get into that. I'm going to try, I'm going to try really hard to do some pop culture content. You know, the Marvel, the DCU, the changes they're making to the DCU. I was, I was pretty upset that they decided to let go of Henry Cavill, but we're going to keep Ezra Miller. The Flashpoint trailer looks pretty interesting, but I'm going to remain skeptical until it comes out. But that's all coming in the further weeks. But for today, I've got more stories about UFOs found in the U.S. government being shot down. They've recovered some wreckage. Um, there was a shooting at the MSU University that took place Monday night. Was, we'll get into it. Also, there's a possible cover, cover up going on by the U.S. government in Ohio with an oil spill. It seems to be polluting the water, polluting the, the surrounding area. People are getting sick. Fish are dying. Pets are dying. But we'll get into all that and some more. Just stick around and it, uh, I'll show you what I got today. I'm sure people are there just watching all uh I just talk it out. Okay. Fighter aircraft assigned to you. Unidentified flying object was shot down. I think this is the third time in three days the U.S. military has took down a UFO. Fighter aircraft assigned to U.S. Northern Command successfully took down a high altitude airborne object off the northern coast of Alaska. Shout out to Newsweek for that first video, but this is basically going into a little more. So top U.S. generals are not ruling out aliens after military shoots down three UFOs. And this is the third one. The third one actually happened, I think, today or maybe last night. So U.S. Air Force general overseeing North American airspace said Sunday he was not ruling out aliens after a string of shoot downs on unidentified objects. Not ruling them out. Nah. I'll get into it. Ask whether or not we had ruled out extraterrestrial origins of the three floating objects shot down by warplanes in as many days. General Van Heck said, I'll let the intel community and the counterintelligence community figure that out. I haven't ruled anything out, added Van Heck, head of U.S. North American Aerospace. At this point, we are continuing to assess every threat or potential threat unknown that approaches the North America with an attempt to identify it. Uh, some more comments. And this is the... Um, I thought this was interesting. The last one found was an octagonal shaped object. And again, they're just, they continue to say object. In my personal opinion, is it UFOs? Probably not. I mean, look at this. This is, these are, these are clearly some sort of surveillance drone or surveillance balloon. And you know, that was all predicated by the fact that there, you know, a Chinese spy balloon flew over pretty much the entirety of the continental United States. And a lot of people are, you know, starting to say this is China or this is Russia or this is some kind of new spy surveillance. That's my that's where I throw my hat in the ring. I believe it's most likely surveillance or some kind of new spy tech. And here's my reasoning for that. I mean, all of these stories you hear about UFOs, it's always, you know, some fringe guy. It's a, a, a fired Air Force pilot. It's this that never is it the U.S. government saying we shot these things down and we don't know what they are. That's why I just don't think it's aliens. If it was aliens or if it was something they truly thought might not be from this planet, we haven't ruled out extraterrestrials, we wouldn't hear about it. It would be, you know, it would be a cover up. So let's read on a little bit more. So indications over the past three days involving airborne objects unknown following the origin of February 4th downing of a Chinese spy balloon that put North America air defenses on a high alert. U.S. officials said that the balloon was being used for surveillance, as I said. Another U.S. Uh, another U.S. defense official speaking on the condition of anonymity said the military has seen no evidence suggesting the objects in question were of extraterrestrial origin. Van Heck said the military was unable to immediately determine the means by which any of these three objects were kept aloft or where they were coming from. Now, okay, yeah, I guess you can't confirm. Dude, it's a balloon. Or maybe that's the spy. Is that the spy balloon? Okay, that's the spy balloon. Okay. Fair enough. That's the spy balloon. Now, these other things, you know, we've got pictures of the spy balloon. We've got pictures of them shooting it down. We've got the wreckage. I can't find any pictures of these other objects. These other three or four, is it, I think it's three other UFO objects that have been shot down. 
I can't find pictures. I can find some descriptions from a few um, Air Force pilots, but that's about it. So we're calling them objects, not balloons, for a reason, said Ben Heck. Okay, because it, it's not a balloon. It's a new surveillance equipment, possibly. Shot down over Lake Huron following the U.S. takedown of two other unidentified objects over Alaska and Canada on Friday and Saturday, respectively. Van Heck said the three most recent objects were very, very small and moved at slow speeds. In the incidents come as the pe Pentagon has undertaken a new push in recent years to investigate military sightings of UFOs, rebranded in the official government parlance as Unidentified Aerial Phenomenon, or UAP. The government effort... Oh, let me stop. Let me stop real quick. Unidentified Aerial Phenomenon? That could, like, mean lights, uh, a, str a strange cloud? What? I don't like that. What's wrong? It it's an unidentified flying object. I don't... And they're trying to distance themselves from the UFO. It's alien. Dude, it's an unidentified flying object. It doesn't mean it has to be little gray men. It means it's a thing in the sky, and we don't know what it is. It's not hard. I don't know why they're making up new words. So the incident, uh, yeah, I already did that. Uh, government efforts take down anomalous unidentified. So is it anomalous unidentified objects? Whatever. I don't care. They're both stupid, so I'm going to keep calling them UFOs. Whether they are in space, skies, or even underwater has led to hundreds of documented reports that are being investigated, senior military leaders have said. So a lot of uh, a lot of the newer speculations about UFOs is that they actually go into the water or they hide in the oceans. And, well, the ocean is the most vast, unexplored thing we have on the planet. So if you were going to hide somewhere, that'd probably be the place to do it, in my, my opinion. So um, that's pretty much it. I mean, you know, we've got we've got a bunch more about the sightings, and this kind of this kind of just trails off. But, uh, a report from the Office of the Director of National Intelligence issued last month cited 366 additional sightings, most likely balloons, drones, birds, airborne clutter, but 171 remain officially unexplained. So, UFOs, new spy equipment. Hey, I'm just a guy on the internet that likes to complain about stuff, but I guess we'll just have to see how it unravels. Like I said, we're gonna do some some UFO conspiracy content so maybe we'll get back into this but let's move on for now so as i was saying there was a deadly shooting that took place uh monday in, Mich in michigan yes in michigan and um let's let's hear about what president biden has to say about it and then we'll uh we'll read a little bit about it hold on a second give me two there we go take a moment to say our our hearts are with the students and the families of michigan state university yes. last night i spoke with governor whitmer and uh the FBI and additional federal law enforcement are on the ground assisting the state and local folks, and uh, three lives have been lost and five seriously injured. And it's a family's worst nightmare. It's happening far too often in this country. Far too often. While we gather more information, there's one... I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I, really quick. I know Joe Biden always uses a teleprompter, but he's like looking this way, this way. Does he have multiple set up or did he actually memorize this? Because they've got him on some good Adderall if he did. Sorry. This is my I think we do know to be true. I'm dying. I'm dying. Sorry. We have to do something to stop gun violence ripping apart our communities. <laughs> today marks five years, five years to the day. That 14 students and three educators lost their lives in Parkland, Florida. I met every one of those families, spent time with them all. And uh, a lot of you here have to confront violence in your communities every single day. We took a big step toward passing the most. There'd be less violence in the community if the community was armed and all of the criminals knew they were armed. Significant bipartisan legislation right, in 30 years. Ghost guns and other things, background checks, but there's a lot more work to do. And uh, I'm committed to getting it done with all of you. Some of you know I, that, uh, and I'm going to say something that's always controversial, but there is no rationale for assault weapons and magazines that hold 50, 70. Arp, 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 arp. All the seals start to clap. Okay. Just quick thing, seeing as how you didn't talk much about the shooting, um, assault weapons aren't real. Okay, I'm, I'm sorry to burst your bubble, leftist. Um, assault weapons don't exist. That's not a real term. Are you talking about an auto, a, uh, you know, a repeating rifle, an automatic rifle, a semi-automatic rifle? These are all actual categories of weapons. Assault weapon means ooh, big scary gun. Sorry, that's not the point. That's not the point of today. You know, the point, the point of what we're talking about today is that you know the tragedy that took place in Michigan. So let's get into that. And I don't, 
I might cut the Joe Biden thing because he kind of just made me mad. Our Spartan hearts are broken. Sparta. Sorry. Sorry. Our Spartan hearts are bro have are broken. Police seek mo mo uh, police. <sighs> Police seek motive for Michigan State University shooting two of three students ID'd have, that were killed or ID'd. Updates. So, more information emerged Tuesday about a 43-year-old shooter with a previous gun violation who ended three Michigan State University students. Late Monday, critically wounded five others, but police were still searching for a motive. Authorities said, Anth uh, I'm not going to read his name, you can find it if you want, uh, had been once on probation for the gun offense and had a history of mental health struggles. He shot and killed. He shot and ended himself after a manhunt that ended in confrontation with police miles from campus, authorities said Tuesday. The uh, university also identified two of the ended students, Michigan resident Brian Frazier, a sophomore, and Alexand Alexandria Varner, a junior. Relatives of the third student requested the name not be released. I don't, I don't disagree with that. President Joe Biden released a statement calling for the Congress to pass specific measures to tighten gun laws nationwide. It's the deadly shooting of the Major Stoneham Douglas High School in Parkland, Florida, which caused every American to exclaim enough and demanded the Congress take action, Biden said. Um, not every American. Most Americans said, uh, where were the police? Investigators were still looking into why he fired inside an academic building and student union shortly before 8.30 p.m. Student union, that's weird. Uh, 8.30 p.m. Monday, leading to a campus lockdown and a three-hour search for the killer. We have absolutely no idea what his motivation was, says Chris Rums, deputy chief of police academy. Uh, let's go down here. So is that it? Wow. So that's pretty much it. Yeah. I mean, they don't really understand what the motives were for this. And unfortunately, two people were lost and or three, three were lost and five have been critically injured. Uh, you know, we can go into how the events unfolded very quickly. So uh, uh, there was absolutely overwhelming police response to that call. He said officers arrived within minutes. Two of, of those killed, several wounded were found in there. He said minutes later, calls came in reporting the second shooting scene in the student union building nearby, five miles from campus, and he ended himself in the confrontation, Roseman said. This is still fluid, Rosman said. There are still crime scenes that are being processed, and we are still in the process of putting together the pieces, trying to understand what happened. Now, you can't automatically arrest every single person that has any kind of issue with a weapon, but, you know, mental health and things like that need to be taken into account. Not as far as we can't let people that have mental health issues get guns. I'm not saying that. I'm saying you have to stop going, it's the weapons. If they didn't have these guns, this wouldn't happen. Dude, people that are intent on hurting other people or people that break the law don't care if you implement a law saying you can't have this gun they're they're criminals they break the law they don't care so that argument never has made sense to me you can't say well if we ban guns then criminals won't have them they're criminals they break the law that's what they do so making new laws isn't going to stop it is it anyway so you know we'll look into that maybe maybe some more more will come out about the about the gunman but let's get into this so this is actually something that happened not as recently as you would expect based on all the content that now is being made about it but this actually derailed on february 3rd a train derailed that was carrying you know, a massive amount of chemicals it derailed and causing it started to burn up uh the train company decided to do a controlled burn to try to stop these some of these chemicals from reaching you know farther areas but based on what a lot of residents are saying and I mean, as you can clearly see, fish are dying, lizards are dying, uh, people have reported being sick, being uh, feeling feeling bad. The government, of course, is coming out and saying, oh, the air is, the air is safe to breathe. Cool. What about the water, dude? So that's why some are saying this is somewhat of a cover-up, but let's get into the story itself. So worried residents out near Ohio, uh, I'm sorry, worried residents near Ohio train derailment report dead fish, chickens as a thor dead fish and chickens as authorities say it is safe to return it's not safe to return if your pets fish and chicken are all dying so this is probably not the best uh best course of action so for days authorities have been telling residents in the area around the east palestine ohio this is safe to return after a 150 car pileup carrying hazardous chemicals derailed on february 3rd this is 11 days ago i don't know maybe i'm out of i you know i haven't been making content i haven't paying enough attention i just heard about this on monday and it was, I mean, before the school shooting took place, I barely heard about this. So a lot of people are saying, is this a cover up? You know, are they going to try to say, oh, it's all, it's perfectly safe. You know, 9-11, they said the air was perfectly safe. And years later, we know that a lot of people are still getting sick and still dying from that, that situation. But the reason a lot of people are like, okay, so is this a cover up? Well, you've got this new shooting that just took place. Everyone's arguing about Rihanna's halftime, Rihanna's halftime performance of the Super Bowl. Everyone's arguing about the DCU. Everyone's arguing about Hogwarts Legacy. Great game. Play the game. 
but is this you know so are we supposed to be worried about all of this other other crap while hazardous chemicals are being burned off in ohio and people are having to evacuate seven and a half mile radius i don't know i don't know i'm just a guy on the internet but let's read a little bit more and then i'll wrap it up for today i don't want to hold you guys too long like i said i know some of this hasn't been as interesting as i wanted it to be but um you know like we're gonna try to branch out but look at these look, i want to show you this picture real quick this is from this is the aftermath and i can't find the picture i was looking for Ah, now it was reminiscent of this one. I mean, it looked like a mushroom cloud hit and like a nuclear weapon had gone off. But um, let's get back over here. So the Ohio Department of Natural Research said the chemical spill resulting in derailment had killed an estimated 3,500 small fish around a seven and a half mile radius of streams on Wednesday. One resident of North Lima said more than 10 miles from East Palestine, uh, Young Youngstown had her five hens and her rooster died suddenly Tuesday. The day before, rail operator Norfolk, uh, Norfolk Southern had burned train cars carrying vinyl chloride, a flammable gas, to prevent an explosion. So, they did a controlled burn to try to prevent further damage. And now, this chemical that they're burning off into the atmosphere is causing pets, chickens, people to get sick, chickens to die. Uh, I believe there was a fox. Uh, there was like a fox breeder that also had his, his fox get sick, and he ended up trying to evacuate. But anyway, uh, let's look at this from let's look at this from a resident. Don't tell me it's safe. Something is going on. The fish are floating in the creek, says Kathy Reese, who lives near, who lives in Neagley, Ohio. Uh, Reese said she saw dead fish in a stream that flows through her backyard. Jenna Guinos, 39, a wedding photographer near Boardman. Boardman said she had a persistent cough for the past week and a half. She had been drinking bottled water and she is uncomfortable bathing in the water from the bathroom spigot. She said. They only evacuated only one mile from the space. That's just insane to me, she said, coughing through her conversation. I'm concerned with the long-term health impacts. It's just a mess. And you see these guys with these suits, but, you know, with these kind of chemicals being burned, I believe one of these chemicals was used as a uh, as a chemical agent in World War One. So this isn't anything to mess around with. So after the controlled burn, Environmental Pro Protection Agency ward area residents of possible lingering odors, but noted that the byproducts of the vinyl chloride can emit smells at levels lower than was considered hazardous. Ohio's officials said Wednesday the residents could return home after the air quality samples showed readings of readings at points below safety screening levels of contamination concern. So they're saying it's safe to breathe, it's safe to be here, but people are still saying, I'm sick, uh, my pets are dying, fish are floating in the creek. Is it sure it's safe to be here? Oh, yeah, it's fine, it's fine. That's, that's called a government cover-up. So, I mean, this is pretty much it. You know, there's not much else to go into. This train derailed. I've been looking into it. Apparently, trains derail more often than you would think. But it's still it's still very concerning to see, you know, this. And you've got people in masks. People are reporting everything. You know, fish are dying. And I really wish they had that picture. They don't. They had a they had a picture from, like, right after it happened. And this is a video you can see of some of the stuff going on. Of, uh, right after it happened, I mean, this just a massive tower of smoke going straight up into the sky, connecting with the, the surrounding, um, the surrounding basically the cloud line and just making a freaking mushroom cloud, basically. It is absolutely terrifying. And maybe that's why I can't find this video. Oh, there it is. There it is. It's going up into the, it, it was so much. It goes up into the cloud cover and they have an aerial shot, not this one, a different aerial shot where, I mean, it, it looks like a nuke went off. It's really actually terrifying. Yeah, I could send toxic gases in the atmosphere. There it is. Look at that. Oh, there it is. There it is. Oh, man, look at that. That is freaky as hell, dude. Including phosgen, which can cause vomiting and breathing problems. Look at this, man. It looks like a freaking mushroom cloud. Now, it's maybe just connecting with the surrounding cloud cover, but that is just absolutely terrifying, man. I'm sorry. That's just terrifying. What else they got? Here we go. And it was used as a chemical weapon in World War One. Yeah, I'm pretty smart, man. I'm just saying. So, um, Ohio's official allowed residents to return to their homes on February 8th, five days after the crash, as monitoring didn't find toxic levels above safe limits. There's a video. Some residents have reported complaining of headaches and nausea. Man, that is a creepy, that is just not good. Pets have died in suspected cases of chemical exposure. Uh, yeah, EPA sent a letter saying it's fine. Chemicals carrying on the train continue to be released. So... And this is the area of where they're saying this, uh, to the air, surface soils, and surface waters. This is basically the general area that's being affected. And a lot of people are saying it's a lot wider than what they're showing. So, But 
you can never really be too sure. And hopefully, you know, this thing is this thing is handled and it's cleaned up rather quickly. But we'll just have to wait and see. So uh, that's pretty much it for me today, guys. Um, like I said, we're gonna try some new content. We're gonna branch out and uh, I got I definitely got some shit to say about the MC, uh, the DCU. I'm pissed about Henry Cavill. Um, Club of Rome. That's do a little reading on it. It's cool. It's creepy and it's been around a lot longer than you would expect. And um, yeah, I guess that's pretty much it. You know, we're gonna. Oh, I do have one more thing. I, I have an idea for another future weapons video. I did that a few months back and it, it didn't do great, but it was actually a lot of fun to make. So we're gonna try to do one of those too. But that's it for me today, guys. Uh, if you liked anything you saw today, hit the like button, subscribe. I'm a really small channel and I'd really appreciate it if you took the time to. At least hit the subscribe button. That always makes me feel a little bit better. But uh, like I said, I'll stop rambling. That's it for today, guys. Uh, keep your eyes open, your ears to the ground. You stay safe out there. I'll see you next time.